So today we're just taking a look at Vance Steel and the use of the Greatec stairs and railings and we're actually going to take a look at railing end types and for this particular one we're going to focus upon a swan neck. So first of all obviously you need to have the dialog open, have your rail created. You come under handrails, you would then come into here, you would click ending type as a sub tab and then you'll see here the uh, tree structure in here i'm going to remain at the top branch of that and just focus upon the top rail uh, so i'm going to be altering this element of the macro here our first thing to do is obviously come in and change the drop down and pick the swan neck type and by doing that you'll find that that will activate and elements will appear in the railing um, they, they might appear sort of set out from there, they might appear at the, the start point here, it depends on if you've used it prior to actually coming into the macro. Um, you'll notice again that obviously there's no parameters or options available in this dialog pane. You need to come in and change the tab here to ending. And now you're again you'll see a different dialog present on the right hand side. You have the, the tree structure here, and obviously still we're going to remain in the top level here of the of the tree, so we remain at the top rail. We're not going to worry about the start and end details just at the moment. Um, and what we have here is two further side tabs, uh, one for properties and one for actually the sidebar. So let's just remain focused on the property tab on the front here. And initially you can see some lengths, you've got a little diagram here showing you what's going on so we can start adjusting some of these and the, the best way to see what happened is actually just to adjust these. And here I'm going to put this back to zero and I will see this, this will actually element pull this back up towards this original start line of the railing. So obviously that's pulled that back onto this line here and it will use the system line as its reference again and the system line is actually in the center of the profile body uh, the next element in here you'll see is obviously the horizontal leg length so this actually is actually 200 mil so this is actually the length from the system line to this system line here now what i'm going to do is i'm just going to i'm just going to take that down to 100 millimeters and you'll just see that that's going to pull that back and pull the sidebar back along with it so it's going to go back towards that direction. And the next element in here is, is, is actually the, the height. Now at the moment uh, it's set to 200, but uh, maybe I want 150. So we just come in here and we adjust that. So I'm just going to adjust that. And with that, you'll see it's going to actually pull up that horizontal element and the sidebar return. It's actually going to shorten that reference to the top handrail. So I'm now going to come back and just put my dialog back in here and I want my 100 mil extension so to get that back down. So I'm going to put the 100 mil extension in and it will actually now drop that rail back down to the level that I required based upon this extension value in here and obviously the height that I'd set in here. So using a combination of these you can obviously derive the form that is required for the swan neck. Now I did say that we'd focus on the top rail and not worry about the start and the end, but we've obviously looked at the start and, and actually we've been looking at the end as well because both bits are being done in tandem. And one of the things you will notice is obviously at the top of the rail, the macro is intelligent enough to know to project this upwards rather than downwards as it did at the lower end of the rail. This occurs when there is a sloped rail. So moving into there, just, just keeping it still at the top level of the of the branch structure within the tree. Uh, I'm going to come down into the next bit here. And this is a connection at start. And this is actually to do with the, the form of the bends within the rail. So how these, these elements are bent. So at the moment it shows it bent, but obviously you could change it to mitre if you want. Some people do, do mitre these rather than bend them. So I'm just going to adjust that and you can see it changing there. I do want to put it back to bent because we would tend to bend these as one piece uh, to form them. And in here, similarly, you can come in and change the radius. You also have a radius definition where you can use 1.5 times the diameter, uh, typically used in bending a tubular element. Uh, it's very similar. The, the, the next one is the obviously the end bend here, and that's in the next panel here. And it's, it's the same kind of controls in here, so we won't, won't change those just for a minute. 
Um, the next element is actually we need to start looking at how the sidebar is actually connected on. So that's this element here. So this element here. And at the moment, this is actually controlled on a different panel. So we're just going to change to this other side tab here that actually says sidebar. Obviously, some of you might see some of the other videos, but here this is a typical thing, a checkbox to make it uh, create. So you can actually turn it off if you don't actually require it. Some people might just bring the other bar of the rail into here and obviously just have this straight bit on the end. Obviously, for the purposes of this, we're actually going to enable it so we can see what's going on. So just turning that back on, we can obviously see the length is coming at 200. So obviously we could change that out uh, if, we, if we wanted. We could change that to 250 and we'll actually change change the length of the leg. It'll just uh, extend out slightly. Uh, we could change the direction as well. So this is fairly obvious, left or right. So we'll actually flip it over now with this change in the dialogue. It'll actually change back the other way. Uh, I'm just going to pop it back to the left because that's what I want. And uh, I'm just going to put my length back to 200 millimeters, actually. So just to see that change back. And the other element is obviously to look at the uh, the junction between the two elements. So at the moment, this is set as a as a mitre. And uh, if I come in, I can change this to a bent one if I so wish. Um, I'll put a radius piece in the corner there. I can do a butt joint as well. So a butt joint will bring one element out straight and cut the element, other element square to it. So you can see a sort of change in the relationship between the two there. Uh, on rail or on leg, it's another little uh, toggle switch. So you can change the bias of which element is controlling the cut. So here now the sidebar is coming through and cutting the main rail. Uh, let's just uh, pop that back to on rail just to give a little bit more length out there. Now, the other thing you'll see is the very last bit is obviously all this at the moment is made out of uh, separate separate pieces. Um, obviously, um, you would have to weld all this together, uh, but to, you may want to actually turn that into one rail section so you could put it into the bender. Uh, this will actually turn the whole rail into a poly rail. So that's the whole rail from start to finish. Uh, there are other options available within the uh, dialog to actually split rail. So we can actually split within the railing panel itself. So uh, that would be subject to another video. But now we can see that, that that is one poly rail formed all the way up for the two railings. And obviously we've gone up to the, the top here. So, you know, for example, if you wanted to get to the top, you could come to the end here. And now we're in there and say we wanted to go in the opposite direction with the sidebar. We can actually change that. So, so normally a good rule of thumb is if you're trying to put an ending type on and it's going to be sort of common to both ends, but maybe one goes left, one goes right, or there's a slight variation in, in the height or the setting out properties, uh, you can actually just set it at the top level by using the top branch level of the tree structure, first of all. Anyway, that's a, that's a very quick uh, run through of obviously using the, the Swan Necker within the Grey Tech stairs and railings uh, focused upon the railing tool itself. Thank you.